Hello viewers, you are welcome back. Welcome back to class. I'm super super excited to have you guys back to class. Don't forget this is Master Builders Online Academy. So if you have not subscribed, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. Make sure that you turn on the post notification bell for more exciting videos when they are uploaded. Don't forget to share this video, like this video, and make your necessary comment at the end of the video. Your comment can be question or can be in form of appreciation or in form of suggestion. So this is it. Now guys, what do we have in this lesson? In this lesson, we have the first point of our journey in calculus. Like I explained in our previous lesson, we are going to be looking at three topics. One is the limit of functions, second is the differentiation of functions, and third is the integration of functions. And I explained clearly that we are going to understand each of these topics when we take them one after the other. Of course, I would have started from limits, but I decided to start from differentiation because I want you to understand limit better when we have treated differentiation. This is because in limit, you apply the knowledge of differentiation. So how can you apply the knowledge of differentiation if you have not first known what differentiation is all about? So since limit is dependent on the concept of differentiation, therefore, we have to first of all look at differentiation. So that when you get the concept of differentiation, limit would have become very, very easy for you to handle. So we will begin from differentiation. So guys, if you are asked, what is differentiation? What will you have to say? Now listen. Differentiation is actually obtaining the derivatives of a function. Differentiation is finding or obtaining the derivatives of a function. It is also known as the rate of change. It is also known as the rate of change between two or more functions. Don't forget, differentiation has to do with at least two functions. Now, guys, what then is function? Because for you to be able to solve problems effectively on differentiation, you must be able to know the basic mathematical functions that we have. Now, what is a function? If you are asked, listen carefully. A function is any expression or equation that contains an integer and what? A variable. A function is an expression or an equation that contains an integer and a variable. What do I mean is if I have 3x, now this is an integer. This is a variable which can be any of the alphabetical letters or any of the mathematical symbols, not signs. Are you there? This is it. So if I have f of x, this is a function of x. So I will therefore have 3x plus 4. These are functions. So a function is an expression or an equation that contains an integer and a variable. Now the next thing we are quickly going to look at is what are the examples of the kinds of functions that we have? Listen carefully. We have varieties of functions in mathematics. And I'm quickly going to take you through the ones that you need in this lesson. Now, generally, we have the following functions. One is what we call constant functions. All right. Now, for constant functions, you have y as c, where c can be 4, 5, 6. Equally, it can be a positive value or a negative value, as the case may be. Now, if this is understood, then number 2, we have linear. Functions. Now, for linear function, I have y is equal to ax plus b. An example of this can be y is equal to 3x 
plus 5. Alright? Now, this is an example of linear function. Now, if that is understood, we have quadratic functions. Now, for quadratic function, I can have y is equal to 3x plus 2 plus 4x plus 6. This is quadratic. Where the leading degree of the function of x is 2. Power of x is 2. This is quadratic function. Then we have polynomial polynomial functions functions now for polynomial functions you can have y is equal to x raised to the power of n where n is greater than or equal to 2 so these are polynomial functions so in this case I can have y is equal to x raised to the power 20 polynomial function. I can have x raised to the power 3 or x raised to the power 5. These are polynomial functions where you have the power of x to be 2 and above. Then we have number 6. We have what we call 3 gonometry. Functions. Now we equally have three geometrical functions. And for three functions, this is where you have y is equal to sine cos tan etc. This is three functions. Then to resemble, we have x four. Exponential functions. Now, for exponential function, you have y is equal to e exponent x or e exponent c x. Yes, c or k is constant. It can be 5x, 6x, 10x, or negative value. These are exponential functions. Then, equally, we have number x. Hyperbolic functions. And for hyperbolic functions, this is where you have y is equal to sine x cos x tangent x at etc. So you see now the difference between a hyperbolic function and trig function is that you have h before x as a function of x. So it, it looks as if this h is a coefficient of x. No, it's not a coefficient of x. Anytime you have sin x, cos x, or tan x, these are examples of hyperbolic functions. Then we have number nine, longer, longer Functions. Now, for logarithmic functions, this is where you have y is equal to log to any base of x. Or maybe you have it something like this any base 3x squared plus. These are logarithmic functions. You can have it b, can be any base. It can be 3, 4, 2, 10, as the case will be, to any base. These are examples of logarithmic function. Then we equally have inverse function, where this is 10. Inverse functions. And for inverse function, you have y is equal to sine inverse cos inverse tan inverse etc. These are examples of inverse function. So we have quite numbers, so many numbers of functions in mathematics. 
So when you understand these functions, then we are going to go with the first stage. So the first stage of getting mastery over differentiation is for you to be able to understand functions. So that anytime you are given the equation, the first thing you need to do is to identify the functions that are involved. Are you with me? Anytime you are given differentiation question, the first thing that you do is to identify the functions that are involved. And understand that in differentiation, we have so many methods of solving differentiation problems, depending on the nature of the question. For instance, we have differentiation of polynomial function. We have differentiation of logarithmic functions. We have differentiation of function of functions. We have differentiation of product functions. We have differentiation of quotient functions. We have differentiation of implicit functions. We have differentiation of so many kinds of functions. So you see, now, how does this method come? It comes because of the relationship between one or two of these functions. So when I have relationship between this first function and this other function, it will require me to use one of the methods of differentiation. Depending on the relationship you have. So you can begin with a differentiation that contains only one function, and that is direct differentiation. Are you with me? When you are we on the same page, when you are given a differentiation, you are asked to differentiate a function, and you identify that this question, this function you are given, is just only one of these functions that you have here. It means that you are dealing with direct function. So differentiation of direct function. But when you are given a combination of two or more of these functions, this will require you to use either product function, chain rule, quotient rule, or implicit function, or any other method that you have. Implicit function is there. A uh, parametric equation is equally there. So guys, in this lesson, what I urge you to understand, or the, ask, the main purpose of this current video you just saw, is for you to understand the functions that we are going to be differentiating as we progress in this course. So before you go to the next lesson, ensure that you're able to get the basic knowledge of all these functions, have an idea of how to identify this function when you are given. This will help you to solve problems on differentiation effectively. Guys, at this point, if you have not subscribed to this YouTube channel, do consider subscribing to this YouTube channel and ensure that you turn on the post notification bell for more exciting videos when we upload it. Guys, don't forget to like this video, share this video, yes, share this video, and make your necessary comment. You stand a chance to replay the video over and over again until you understand these functions that we just mentioned here. In the next lesson, we are going to be looking at differentiation of standard functions. That's what we are going to be looking at. Now, you can check the link to that video at the description below. Love you guys. See you in the next one.